Hey everyone, welcome to part six of the stack component series. In this video, we're gonna be going over how you can have attributes that you gain per level, and then you'll allow the player to decide on how to allocate it. So whether they want to put in three points into strength or agility, or maybe two into strength, one in intelligence, whatever it may be. We're gonna go into how we can go about setting that up, as well as how to make sure our UI stays constantly updated. Uh, so, Throughout this process, we're gonna make sure that our UI can be updated. This will also help you for your own UIs just to learn how you can pull the information necessary and then also make sure to stay updated. Uh, we never want the UI to be open and to gain a level and all of a sudden everything looks exactly the same and the player doesn't know until the next time they open up their UI. Uh, so we're going to go into all of that in this video. If you enjoy these type of series, please hit the subscribe button. The support you guys give helps me a ton and it helps the channel grow so that it can go to more people. So I appreciate you guys and let's get into it. All right. So the first thing we need to do is decide how we're going to go about doing this. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is let me open up the UI that we have set up right now. So as of right now, what we have is our name level XP, and then we have the attributes and the stats. Well, what we want to do is that upon gaining a level, we wanna be able to hit a button so that you can either gain strength, agility, or intelligence. And then what we also want to display is how many available attributes they can distribute. So we're essentially gonna to need to create a brand new attribute, and we're just gonna call that like, um, not bonus attribute, but we'll just do like attributes available. Uh, you can rename it to whatever you'd like, but we'll be able to create this and then we're gonna use that value to decide how much we can give to strength, agility, or intelligence. So let's go ahead, set up that attribute. I'm actually gonna set it at the top where this header is. Uh, that way, um, it's just a lot easier to know what's available. You can, of course, design it however you want. I'm not aiming for beauty here, so decide on whatever you would like and we can go from there. So I'm gonna hit the uh, edit button so to go straight into the header. From here, I'm actually going to copy and paste. I'm gonna then set this to attribute. This is gonna be our fourth one for the available attributes. We'll then go into Oh, it's in set level. I was like, where's our events? And then from here, we're going to grab the attribute. We're gonna copy and paste this, plug that in. We'll name this uh, ATT available, name it whatever you want. And then from the set level and XP, we're going to add a new value call this attribute and change it to a float. And then from here, under the set name and value, we're gonna do attribute. Oh, did I misspell something? Oh wait, hold on. We'll have to do attributes and then it has to convert to a text. Okay. So that would allow the header to display that. Currently, it's gonna be showing probably just zero. Yeah, by default, it's set to zero. So that's with that. Now we need to be able to add this attribute to the rest of ours. So let's go to our enums, attribute values, and let's add a brand new enum. So we're gonna add it here and we'll call this Available, oh, available attributes. Or now let's change it to attributes available. Name it whatever you'd like. Uh, okay. And now let's go into our stat system. We're going to open this up. From here, we need to add that new variable that we just created. So let's expand this over here. From here, Let's hit the add element, select the brand new value, add element, brand new, and do the same thing here. And then go ahead and hit compile from here. Now we wanna make sure that our attribute is being displayed within the header correctly. 
Uh, so under our player stats events, we're going to need another attribute check. Changes to attributes available, plug that in, and then we have to plug that value into here. And then just to make this a little cleaner, let's collapse this to a macro. We're going to call this get attribute values. And then let's go ahead and rename these. First one was level XP max XP and then attributes. And also the names are shown right here in case you think I was doing the top of my head. So from here, what we want is that now we have the attribute will be displayed and then let's go in here, press the one key. Uh, looks like it's not working. My debugs, let's go back into our event graph, shrink this a little. And then I did move these over into just like one giant comment. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, nothing's plugged in. And that's because it looks like I accidentally deleted the variable. Let's do this. Let's call this widget. Plug that in. And then do if validated get, plug that in. If it is valid, remove it. And then let's actually do a bit more. Let's get player controller. And then let's go ahead and set game mode and UI. The reason I'm doing game mode and UI is just because um, I currently have all my debugs within the player stats. So if I did UI only, we wouldn't get those debugs. Uh, so that's why I'm doing that. But normally when you open up a UI, you set it to UI mode. And then we'll do set game mode only. So whenever we remove the widget, we're going to get rid of that. And then let's also get player controller set show mouse cursor. And we also show the mouse cursor. We don't need that. And then let's copy this over here and plug that in. Oh, looks like we had an error. Remove from parent. There we go. Okay, press one. Okay, so now we see it available. Cool. Next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we can gain a certain amount of bonus attributes every time we level up. So go into the stat system. We're going to go into our level up. And then kind of how we have our add XP, we're going to now add that bonus attribute. So we're going to do add attribute and then do available attributes. And then from here, you can actually set how many stats you wanna gain per level. So how much you wanna distribute. Uh, for me, I'm just gonna do one right now. Uh, but what you could do is that under the data table with the XP, so if you were to open up this data table, you could actually set it up so that you can have another row where um, you can have attributes. So like, let's say like level one, you wanna give them three stats and then level 10, you give them five stats, 15, you give them um, seven stats, whatever you want. You'd be able to control how many stats they get per level and actually designate that value. Or you could just give them a certain amount every type of level, however you wanna build it. You could even do it to where at level 30, they just stop gaining uh, additional attributes, but they could still get to like 31, 32 or whatever it is. That's how you could set that up. So with that, let's see if that works. Uh, so let's go ahead, open here. We're gonna press one. Actually, we gotta gain levels first. And then we hit level four and it looks like the value is not updating. So we're gaining levels with level five. We should have five available stats right now, but we don't. So let's see what's happening here. So let's go back to our player stats, open this up. Let's see. 
we are checking the attributes, but it's not adding. Let's see, we've added available attributes to all three of these. Okay. okay, so let's just create a debug like we do with all the other ones. Um, add attributes. Let's go ahead and change this E key to add bonus attributes, or not attributes. Um, delete this. We'll do a attribute check. Plug that in and do attribute space. Plug that in and let's see. So we gained levels, we're level four. Let's press the E key and it looks like we're still at zero. So we're actually not gaining anything. Let's go back over here, add attribute value. Let's go into, okay, okay. So what happened is because we added the value, uh, forgot and skipped a step for the switches, we need to connect all of these. So let's open up our sub functions, sub functions and just connect the pins. Now let's go into here. And now when we're gaining levels, it's working. Well, cool. So we're level six, we have six attributes. So that's working great. Now, the only issue we're having right now is that I have to actually close this to open to update. So let's go ahead and fix that first. Uh, so with that, we need to have a functionality so that whenever we update stats, we are able to redo all of this. So let's do a custom event, call this update. UI, we're gonna, let's see, let's get rid of this do once because we don't actually need it. Because what we're gonna do is that we're gonna grab the stats container and we're gonna do clear children. So anytime this is called, it just clears it. And then we'll plug that in. So now every time it'll just update here. And what we need to do is have a way to reference this update UI every time we update our stats. So let's go into our stat system. We're then gonna create a brand new function. So let's go ahead and close these out. And we're gonna call this refresh UI. And what I'm gonna be using is the reference to my widget. Uh, since I create this over here, I'll have that widget reference for your own project. You'll need to set up a reference to get the specific player stats widget, uh, whether that is getting the main menu reference or getting the specific widget itself, just as long as you have a reference. So we're going to go back over here. We're going to do validated get. So if it is valid, we are then going to update UI. If it's not valid, we're doing nothing. So from here, now we wanna call this refresh UI whenever it's necessary. And actually let me close out all of these because again, I just don't like having too many tabs open. And we need to now call it to the important functions that we have available. Uh, so we know that when we gain levels, we have to update our UI. So we could just plug it in here directly. But what this does is we actually check our max XP at the end. So if we went to our max XP, it'd be easier for us just to add it here. So let's go ahead and pull that in, plug that in. And then we'll go over here. And we'll plug that in. So whenever we gain levels, we'll be able to update the UI. And now what we got to do for a couple of other things. So we're not always gaining levels. Sometimes we may gain stats otherwise. So like, let's say we're gaining um, 
attributes from items or whatever it is, we want to make sure that the UI is updating. So the best place for us to do that at would be under the, let's see, the update stats. This is when we start the game. So we'll just grab here and we'll just plug that in. And then lastly, the next thing we actually do, actually, hmm, maybe we don't need an update stats. Instead of doing update stats, delete that. We can actually do it in the scaling stats here, because once we take all of the scaling, we can just update here. So no matter what we scale with, we're updating our stats. Okay, let's see how that looks. Let's go into here, press one, let's gain level. I'm gaining levels, let's gain extra attributes, which I am. Perfect. Okay, so now we have our UI is functionally adding everything. Now we actually need to give them the ability to add themselves. So we're gonna have to do a bit of editing to the current existing widgets. So right now we need to add a button next to strength, agility, and intelligence. Currently, these are a widget that are being created throughout our create stat widgets. And they're all using the same widget. So what we need to do is make one separate for the attributes instead of using all in one. So we're gonna go ahead and do control D to copy this. And we'll do create attribute widgets. And from here, we're gonna go into the UI and we're gonna copy and paste this. So control D again, and we'll do attribute info. And what we'll need to do is within this widget, we now need to have a button to the right. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have one button where I can designate to add a stat. So we're gonna need another button. So I'm gonna take my common, what is it, button base, button? I don't remember. It's definitely not that one. All right, we'll pull that in. And then from here, We'll actually notice it kind of squishes to the end, but since I put my image in the border, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually wrap this border with another horizontal box. We're gonna hit that fill button. So it goes over here and I'm gonna take this new button I got and put it underneath the border. And I'm gonna give it a minimum of like 50, 50. And then I'm also gonna give it a little padding just so it's not touching all of the edges to give it some space like we did over here. So let's just do like 10. That may be a little too much, but that's all right. And then from here, let's change this to BTN add attribute. So whenever this button is triggered, we're adding an attribute. And then lastly, for this button, we want to change the style. So I'm gonna take my current existing style and just copy and paste. And I'm going to turn this into, um, let's do add attribute style. And to add a new style, you can just hit that plus button as well. And then I'm going to just drag this into the right folder. Open this up. And then from here, I'm going to change the normal base, the normal hovered, normal pressed, and disabled. And then I'm gonna change these into images because I don't need rounded boxes. And I'm going to now put in the image that I imported, which is just a plus sign for all of these. Hit compile. I'm gonna go back over here and now use the new style that I created. Perfect. Don't worry about the sizing. I actually set it to where it's 50-50. So no matter what, when we 
create this widget. So if we change this to attribute info, oh, looks like I forgot to compile. All right, now go back over here. Oh, missed one last thing. Instead of create stats over here on this loop, we want to do create attributes, plug that in. And now we get the plus signs. So like that, now we have the pluses, but now we need to be able to get these buttons to actually do stuff. Because right now, if we went over here, open this up, we can hover and press them, but they don't do anything yet. So let's go ahead and exit out here. Within our player stats, let's just move it over a little. What we want to do is that instead of passing along the string, we actually want to pass along the attribute that these buttons reflect into the actual widget itself. That way, whenever this is pressed, we have a reference to what stat we want to increase. So instead of doing two string, let's go ahead and change this to attribute. And we want attribute value. Let's go back to the event graph and plug that in. So now we have the value, we need to pass it into this as well. So let's go into the graph, add a new value, call it attribute again, call it attribute value. What we're going to do here is delete the text name. We don't need that anymore. We're going to pull in the attribute. We're going to do two string and then two text. And the next thing we need to do is that for our button that we have here, which is the add attribute, we want to click on it and do on base clicked. So when this button is clicked, we want to be able to pass along the attribute value that we have. So in order to do that, we're going to create an event dispatcher. The, an event dispatcher will allow other type of blueprints to pull in specific variables from that widget. So we're going to go into here, we're going to do send attribute. And then at the very top, under input, we're going to add a new one, we're going to do attributes, and then do attribute value and then pull this in and type call grab our attribute value and plug it in so now whenever this button is clicked it's going to send this event with the value so we don't need anything else left here so let's just go ahead and save it make sure everything looks good close it out and then from here, we're going to hit that refresh button. Oh, and it looks like we shouldn't have closed it out because we skipped making sure that this value is instance editable and exposed on spawn. Okay, now we can close that out. We close out the style as well. Now hit refresh. And then we can plug it in. And I guess for a third time, I may have lied because Let's actually move this on top just because it's a little neater and hope that's the last time we have to open that up. And now it's on top. The next thing we need to do is that when creating this event, we want to make sure that we can call or listen to the event dispatcher. So that way, whenever the button is pressed, we make sure we get the value and then we know what stat to add. So we're going to go ahead and drag this off and we're going to type bind to send attribute. So we're going to move this over here, plug that in. Don't worry about the line, I'll fix it in a second. And we'll do create. And we'll do create matching function. And then from here, we're going to change this to add attribute. So go back into our create attribute. Let's move over this. And let's promote this to a local variable. 
just call this widget. And then we'll plug that in. And then we'll grab our local variable. Ooh. Plug that in. Let me get these things and move it down just to make it a little cleaner. Okay. So now whenever we press the button, we'll be able to call this event. And in this, this event, we can then decide what to do. So what we'll do is we're going to get our stack component. We will add attribute. And we'll just plug that in. And we'll add one. You can actually decide, like, if you want to send that in, you can add more than one if you want. Uh, I'm only going to add one. And then from here, we are going to subtract attribute. And we want to remove the available attributes by one, just so we're decreasing. So we'll go ahead and save. So that looks good. And then we should just call the update UI as well at the end to make sure we're updating. Now, one thing is you'll notice that when we subtract, we actually can go to the negatives right now. So if we actually went and played, and if I hit plus, we know I'm at zero, but I can still add going into the negatives. So let's make sure we have a check to make sure that's not happening. Let's go into the create attribute function. And all the way here at the end, let's do a attribute check, attribute check. Let's disconnect that right now. And then we will check if the attributes available is greater than zero and branch. So let's go ahead and move that over. And if it is greater than zero, we will allow us to create and bind this event. If it's not available, what we want to do is actually disable the button. So we'll do add attribute button and we'll do set enabled. And then we want to make sure it's off. But also we want to make sure that whenever it is in fact greater than zero, we want to enable it. So we'll hit enabled, plug that in, move that over. And we'll go in here, press one. And now we can gain one and the button is disabled. And it looks like I actually didn't set the disabled button correctly. So I'm actually going to go back into that style and just darken it. And there we go. So it's disabled. I don't have anything available, but let's say I gain a level and now I'm level two. And actually, I think we noticed the little bug. I'm at level zero. So let's go into our stat system. At the beginning of the game, our level should be one. Starting attributes. Update stats. And I think that is due to the fact that I'm pulling. Um, let's go into player stats, event graph. I think it's because I'm pulling the total attributes and I'm never calculating the total attributes at the beginning of the game. So under stat system, beginning of the game, I need to update all stats. Is that what we're doing here? 
level all attributes. I think we are doing that, aren't we? Hmm. Maybe it's because of the slot I have, possibly. Because when I gain a level, I'm going to the right level. But the first display is showing zero. What if I was to change player stats to base? I hit one. Okay. It's just not calculating all of them. So the function that we are using to calculate all stats, isn't it the level up stats? No, that's level up all attributes. What about sub functions? Okay, so what we need to do is that under the update stats, we'll do set total attributes. And we need to update the level. And I actually think we need to do for XP and max XP too. And let's do this. It's going to be kind of messy right now. And I do apologize for that but we can fix it at a later time when we have a better solution. Plug that in. X. Oh wait, I didn't mean to actually delete those. I wanted to copy. hit one, and then now we're at level one. So with that, now we have functioning stats where we can go ahead and update and then distribute accordingly to however we want. And the moment we, we run out, it disables it. Uh, so that's how you can set up to have stats to distribute. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, this series, guide, whatever you wanna call it, uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button and join Discord. Uh, like I said, your support helps me grow and then allows me to get some more functionality in YouTube. So thank you guys all for your support, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day.